Ray Orchestra, directed by Joseph Pons. Now it's time to welcome Kate Herbert, our regular Melbourne theatre reviewer. Hello, Kate. Hello. Now you're going to tell us about the MTC play Boys and Girls. Yes, I am, which is a play written by Dennis Kelly, an English play uh, performed by Melbourne Theatre Company, so it's at the Fairfax. And I, I was really delighted to see this. It's a solo performance by Nikki Shields. Some may have seen her in the... Um, uh, 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 Dorian, Gray? Well, Dorian Gray. I'm yes, sorry, she was Dorian the Gray. alternate. Yes, they didn't give me any tickets to that, so I didn't see the damn thing. Um, tut tut, enough of that. Um, so Nikki Shields gives uh, it's an impressive and rapid fire performance, really. And she plays what I would describe as an, a hilariously combative, loud, brassy, audacious, youngish mother, London woman, uh, with a lovely. South London accent, I think it is. It's a working class accent. The first hour of the play, Dennis Kelly's play, is pretty damned funny. And it lulls the audience into a false sense of security, really, that they're watching a comedy because she is hilarious. The timing is beautiful. The the dialogue is very funny. But the hints and the cues keep coming that um, something is not all well in the world of this woman sort of non-specific indicators and this feeling of impending uh, darkness, I suppose. It does get quite dark. She is uh, a young woman who is a, and a successful documentary filmmaker these days. She's married to what she describes as a passionate, supportive man. She's always considered him to be a doer. She's got uh, two young children, Danny, who's a rowdy little boy. She's probably, I don't know, four-ish. Leanne, who's a rather orderly, clever little daughter. And we see her playing with those children. So it's rather beautifully directed um, by Kate Champion on an almost empty stage. So Shields addresses the audience directly with sort of honest and revealing and expletive riddled stories about uh, the character's life and lots of colourful opinions. The broad working class London accent, as I said, we go through, trawl through her youthful past follies, dredge up images of booze, soak, sex filled partying and checkered work and dubious lovers. Then she meets the husband, successful career, etc. So scattered between those evocative and revelatory monologues are the she plays with the two little children. We don't see there. them. They're not there. No, she They're, creates them. She creates them, evokes them through the mime on stage. It's beautiful, delightful and joyful, this thing. And that's when we start feeling this sort of something dark coming. So to, di- to divulge the shock revelations would be a spoiler, so I won't tell anybody. But suffice to say, I gasped, I clutched my heart and, and jammed. I jammed one hand over one ear because I thought, I don't think I want to listen to this. And I thought, I have to hear some because I have to talk about it. <laughs> um, but... Sometimes a little bit didactic in the dialogue. The performance is probably a five star and the play is perhaps not quite there. It's just a little bit... Um, the gear shift towards the end from comedy to the darker is not is a little bit jarring. But it's really worth a look, uh, the MTC at the Fairfax. Um, you'll have to keep me on time because I'm not certain... You've got we've something else to I've talk about. I've got something else to talk about. We've got the new production, the spectacular The Phantom of the Opera, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's with um, lyrics by Charles Hart and you know various other people, book by Richard Stilgo and Andrew Lloyd Webber. It's based on, let me try this in a bad French accent, Le Fantôme de l'Opéra, a novel by Gaston Leroux. What a pretentious thing that was. Um, Opera Australia with the really useful group, which is Cameron Mackintosh. So it's Cameron Mackintosh's revised version of The Phantom. And if you've been living under a rock or you've just been <laughs> off the grid for a long time, The Phantom's a story of the impossible love of um, a beauty, Christine Daae, who's played by Amy Manford, uh, by a beast, sort of. Um, the Phantom is played by Josh Pitterman, who is, was in the Ten Tenors, but this is a role for a high baritone. Uh, so it's it's a two-octave range. So lovely, rich voice with, you know, beautiful top notes as well as the richness at the bottom. So the man, the fandom has a facial deformity that has blighted his life, hence the mask, and sent him to, sent him underground, literally, to dwell in the cavernous tunnels beneath the Paris opera house that he haunts. So this is, uh, there's something wonderful about the score, obviously. I have a friend who loathes Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff, but I quite enjoy them. Um, This has a lot of balletic choreography, uh, the Phantom is, I think, less central. It is less. There's less focus on the Phantom because the rest of the production is so lavish and almost bombastic spectacle. The 
the ham operas, the Hannibal and various other things are beautifully costumed. There's lots of ballet. There's even a little Degas-looking ballet dancer scene. Um, Baroque kind of things, a bit of Renaissance costuming. So it almost overwhelms the subtlety of this other dark underground story, the love story between the Phantom and his unrequited love for Christine and the love um, between Christine and the Vicomte uh, Raoul, which is a really sweet little story, beautiful songs, the um, Phantom singing the music of the night. It's thrilling and potent, as we know. Uh, Christine... Uh, has a what's an Amy Manford? I'm sorry. Has a bell-like soprano with a rather lovely vibrato and a delicate. She's almost balletic in physicality. So they blend. Um, Peterman and Manford's voice, voices blend beautifully, singing those duets, "The Phantom of the Opera" title song, and "Remember." Stranger Than You Dreamt It. Blake Bowden is a lovely commanding presence as Raoul, uh, and the. Duet with uh, Amy Mamford, All I Ask of You, is really heartfelt and delightful. The, uh, I think what I like about it is the, the spectacle, but I do miss that focus on. My memory is of the gondola going through the lake underneath, underground, and I think we've so lost a bit quite, of that. It's quite different from that it, earlier. I, it's so long I since saw. I saw it. I don't know if my memory is completely different, but I think this is... Much more lavish, much more decorative, and the those other scenes with the crowds, 37 cast on stage and lots of singers and big voices, uh, seems to sort of shift the balance a little. But go see it. If you love the fandom, go see it. Fabulous. Well, you've given us two very different shows to go really? and see and both very worthwhile. Mm. Thanks, Kate, so much for coming in and chatting with us. Pleasure. Victoria Brass, in association with Royal Albert 